another Jira report. This time I am exploring control chart. Control chart is a very useful report, especially if you are working in a Kanban mode, because it helps you in predicting the cycle time. It can also help you in predicting the lead time. It helps you in seeing the trend of your cycle times and lead times, which is an important thing for your retrospective and problem analysis. So let's see the details and we talk about lead times and cycle time and other things with the help of Jira control chart. So I start from a Kanban board. Let's move to the report. So I go to the report and here I see cumulative flow diagram and control chart. These are the two default reports we get in our Jira Kanban projects. So we spoke about cumulative chart in our another video. Let's look into control chart now. So when I click on control chart, it will extract the data and plot the control chart for us. So I can get some help about reading this particular chart by clicking here how to read this chart. If I feel I'm comfortable, then I can leave that. I can hide this information. Let me try to explain these things to you. So the issues are small dot yeah, in here. The big dot is a cluster of issues. Now, this is like a, a, a control chart. Control chart starts from a mid-level. You have an average number. So say if I have 100 issues, and if I take an average of these 100 issues, that how much was the average cycle time, that will be the average line. Yeah, so we have an average line plotted. Now, any issue which is taking less than average will come as a below the line. So you see here dots here. Yeah, it means these items were, were, were taking less time than this average elapsed time, which was in this particular case is around, I think, 15. If I am not wrong uh, here, you can say that, yes, it is around uh, one week, five days. So this is like a, a, that's the average time. So here you can also see what is the average, which is calculated based on these issues. Here you have a number of issues also, which are uh, identified, which are coming here. So based on these issues, you see also a max time out of this data range. You also see a median. Median is like if you put everything in the order, you pick up the, the median uh, uh, issue, you find that issue having three days and eight hours of, of the uh, uh, time or a cycle time. So you have an issue representation and you have a cluster of issue representation. So let's go here back. So uh, here, if anything is above the red line, it means it shows that those things were taking more time. You know that there are outliers also. So something took this much time. There are cluster of issues. It means they, they took 120 days plus. In a Jira way of working, I can click on a particular issue and I can get information about uh, uh, that, okay, what was its uh, uh, overall rolling average at that point in time and what is the standard deviation. And I can click more to find a particular issue as well. We'll explore that, yeah. But before that, let's talk about what is rolling average and what is standard deviation. So we have learned the media, the red line, the mid line is an average number, average cycle time. We have learned the dots which are below average, which means we, they were finished faster than the average time. The dots which are going above average, it means they took more time than the, the average uh, time. Now about the rolling average, yeah, this, this line which you see here, yeah, this line you see here. So what is this uh, uh, thing? So based on the number of data you pick up, there is, they show what is a rolling average window. So it's an odd number. In this particular case, it's a 59 issues. So depending upon the data side, this number is picked up. So any issue they take, say if it's number is nine, and I am looking at an issue, they will take a four issues before that uh, uh, particular issue and four issues after that issues, and then create an average of uh, uh, how much was the cycle time. So that particular thing will be a rolling average. So you here you can say the average is just a one line. It's a consistent, but rolling average is going up and down. Yeah. So definitely rolling average going down is a good idea, which means that we have a trend of reducing our cycle time. If it goes up, then we can say the rolling average is showing that we are going towards the up. Minimum, minimum, they need five issues in order to create this particular uh, rolling average. So rolling average done, average done. Now standard deviation. So as you know, the standard deviation is, is a factor which shows how a particular instance is, is deviating from the mean value or average value. That's the same thing. So standard deviation is a shaded area. 
And if the range is narrowed, it means it's good. If the range is big, it means the predictability is poor. So we have a lot of variation happening. Sometimes lead time is, is less, sometimes lead time is more, even though we have average and all, but it's difficult to predict. Now here you see a little cluttered data. I think I need to filter it because uh, uh, sometimes your project may have a lot of information and you probably need to segment it, categorize it to make it better. So here you can use your quick filters, which you might have created for your board. You, all the board filters will be visible here. Since I spoke about like I work as a product owner, more or less, so I'd say I focus on the issues which are created by me. And when I say so, then this life becomes little better. You can say that it's little clean graph here. The, the standard uh, uh, deviation is also narrowing down uh, gradually. Yes, I do see the uh, uh, rolling average is going up in a way. It came down, it is going up again from last few days. It means the issues are on average are taking more time uh, here. And we are using five issue window. This is that's the rolling average is coming based on five issues and total issues are 25. So this much is, is understood. Now I was showing that Jira also allows you to do a dig deeper. Say you want to know about this particular thing and say what happened here. You can really find the direct issue. You can go there and see the details about that particular issue. So it, it takes you into the, the view and you can come back and that can help you in doing the, the work. Now, what is the cycle time and how it differs from the lead time and how can I play with it? So here you have a columns, yeah, which are the critical one and by default it comes as an in progress. So let's see. In my board, I have three columns like backlog, in progress, and done. So things are moving from here to here. The cycle time, if I select in progress column only, is primarily uh, measuring me, uh, giving me the number that how much time we took at this particular stage. So it is not counting the time which was spent in a backlog column. As soon as it comes in in progress, the timer starts. As soon as it leaves the in progress, the timer stops. So if you have, say, four columns, yeah, then you can find out cycle time of respective columns. So it will be based on arriving and departure. And that's all the calculation, all the day calculation, all the trend will be based on that particular time number. Yeah. So whatever number you see here, the days and all, these days elapsed time is basically coming from the cycle time. And cycle time uh, by default depends upon which column is got selected. So moving from a one stage to another stage, and that is our focus area. So it's like that. If I have a stage called development and test, I may want to find out how much time does it take to finish the development cycle time. So I will have a column. I will only click the development and it will show me the graph of development. If I only want to focus on test, I can say dev and test. I will click on the test. I will uh, unselect the dev and I will see how much time it took into the test space and that helps me in plotting the cycle time and trend which helps me in identifying a particular stage in this particular case in progress how long the things are getting stay or staying or stuck in that particular stage that's the cycle time now how can i convert into a lead time so lead time is usually a term which we use if you have a multiple stages say three stages i want to start my counter as soon as i enter here and i want to continue counting it till the time i go out yeah, so I want to include everything before done. So in that particular case, I can use lead time uh, uh, also for uh, this particular chart. The only thing I need to do is I need to include backlog. Yeah, so backlog including, which means the time counter now started from the point the issue or uh, the thing got added in the backlog. So here the line and the average and the numbers all are showing backlog to done stage now. Yeah, so it is coming into the backlog and moving to an in progress. Done is a final stage. So even if you depart from uh, in progress, it takes care of the whole uh, uh, cycle uh, lead time in this particular case because we are getting two things. Now, if I uh, uh, put something uh, and and say that I I want to have some click here. So say if I click a particular thing, it may also show me a backup of it. So I had this particular issue. Yeah. It was in a backlog for 11 hours, 56 minutes. Then it stayed in a in progress for one hour and 12, two, uh, uh, one day and two hours. And then it got done. So in a way, this is its total lead time, but I can get a breakup of each stages as well. So if I want to find a detail, I can definitely go here. 
Yeah, just for a sake of sample, we will go there. And here also I'm getting a sample information. So I understand a lot of, of uh, many of the comment because default control chart videos are many available, but people don't get the details. So let's get into the detail and see uh, how this particular thing looks like. So it was a work which we just posted our banner and other things. So if I go to the history of this work, this work was done by, by one of my team member. So here in the history, any, any issue will have a history. Even if you don't watch a control chart, still it, it shows you the history. And uh, you, you see this whole thing that, okay, it was created here, it stayed here, and then it, it moved from this stage to this stage. And then probably it came back uh, because uh, I, I marked it open for a while and finally it gets done. Yeah, So I can see the whole history of this particular uh, issue as well, which will be an important thing, especially for outlayer issues, which are coming in the control chart. So in summary, uh, uh, you can play with your quick filters. So as I have been showing for me, my development team filter, specific web team filter, might play a critical role. I want to see how the web team is performing and, and things are going. Uh, I basically believe in keeping both the status for at least for my team because sometimes they, they directly mark from backlog to done and, and that the issue may remain in the backlog for very long. So sometime in progress is not coming. So if I take up both the status, I get a cumulative uh, uh, flow for that particular uh, uh, stay, uh, 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 say, uh, control chart. So yes, you have an option of including the non-working day or excluding the non-working day. So usually uh, I have keep the, the non-working day uh, excluded. So it means it is not counting them while they are showing this particular calculation. Uh, so this is all. If you have a specific comment or query, you can definitely uh, comment in the section. And the key for me of using this chart is first the data segmentation. We need to identify where to exclude. Also getting layer uh, out uh, the out layer out. So if you have too many out layers, which may confuse this whole chart, you probably want to get them out as uh, well. Now, what do I do with it? I see how the trend is going. I monthly basis, every two weeks, whenever we are analyzing, we aspire to bring our rolling average gradually down. We do an analysis of out layer items. Uh, we try to find out, especially if we have to give a predictability of SLA to other people. Uh, if we have a different different type of work items, we use this information that on average we are taking this much time in order to finish the work. And that also help us in giving predictability and estimation to our uh, clients as well as internal uh, uh, expectation management of, of some of our stakeholders. So basically it is used for figuring out SLA, service level agreement, with the help of historical data. And it also help us in doing problem solving and diagnosis of our work trend because it help us in knowing how much is our cycle time and lead time. And depending upon number of column you select, it shows you the, the box or a time window which is getting covered in this particular chart. Yeah. So that's it about control chart 